It probably was, however it plays out, Deshaun Watson's last contract in Houston. You know, Miles, yesterday during the show, when the word broke that Tyrod Taylor had agreed to terms with the Texans, my first thought was the Texans finally have reached acceptance. They've gotten through anger, denial, bargaining, and depressions, and they accept that they have a problem. Whether they're accepting that they have to trade Deshaun Watson or they're accepting that they need a viable quarterback on the roster if Watson sits out, that's still not clear. But you and I both saw the tweet today from John McClain when he says that he believes that Deshaun Watson will be traded. And this is the guy who on January 7th said he's got a better chance of being the next coach of the Texans than than Deshaun Watson being traded. That was January 7th. We're just two months and change past that, and he's come not full circle. He's done the 180. And uh, I, I think that means Deshaun Watson's getting traded and that the signing of Tyrod Taylor isn't to be insurance against Deshaun Watson sitting out. It's to be their quarterback until they bench him for whoever they draft in round one, like what happened to Tyrod Taylor with the Browns and with the Chargers. Yeah, or, or it could just be that he's going to be the backup to Tua Tagovailoa if they end up shipping Deshaun Watson to Miami. And then maybe he could be the relief pitcher since Tua Tagovailoa needed one of those last year. So I, I think that when you see John McClain say something and the way he's been following the story, obviously he's evolved on what he thinks of this. And I think as time has gone on, look, you got to think about what was going on back then on that date in January, the, the Texans didn't have a head coach yet. I don't think we knew quite the full extent of Deshaun Watson's frustrations. We, we hadn't gotten to the point where the Texans didn't really interview Eric B until after it came out that Deshaun Watson was upset that they hadn't, we didn't get to the point where, you know, they hadn't really talked seriously with Robert Sally, even though Deshaun Watson had said, Hey, this is a guy that I think we might want to be interested in. So, I think from there to now, there's been a lot of things that have happened, and there have been more things that have come out about the Houston Texans organization, whether it's Cal McNair, whether it's Jack Easterby, you know, the way they went about hiring Casario. There's just a lot of things, I think, that have happened in the last couple of months that have really cemented Deshaun Watson's feelings as to why he doesn't want to play for the Texans any longer. And I think that it would behoove the Texans, and it would probably be in their best interest to trade him sooner than later because his value is never going to be as high, I think, as it is right now. Or maybe it might get a little bit higher, but at least by the time they're drafting at the end of April, I don't know that it's going to be higher than that, Mike. I think the thing that needs to happen now, and this is what needed to happen back in January, you find out the teams to which Deshaun Watson would accept a trade because he has a no-trade clause. Where do you want to go? And even without a no-trade clause, franchise quarterback – He's got to want to go to where he's being traded or that team shouldn't want him, just like the Bears never made a real offer for Carson Wentz because Wentz didn't want to go to the Bears. So with or without the no-trade clause, you can't do this deal if the guy didn't want to be there. So, Deshaun, where do you want to go? Give us a fair list. And then you you start the bidding. Peter King has suggested a blind auction because he thinks that's, that's the way to get the most out of David Tepper, the Panthers owner. But however you do it, you do it. And you do it before the team's to which Watson would accept a trade, lock in to their long-term quarterback answers. And right now, I see the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Panthers, and the Broncos, and the Broncos, because I think the Broncos can tread water with Drew Locke until the ninth overall pick in the draft and see how it plays out. And I think the draft, round one, that's when you want to get it done by, because if you're the Texans, I assume you'd like to have 2021 draft capital not 2022 and there's no reason to hold his contract until after june 1 like with russell wilson there's not some gigantic cap charge if you trade him right now so i, I think it makes sense because really who who's left if russell wilson's not getting traded andy dalton signed Jameis winston signed ryan fitzpatrick signed you got marcus Mariota, you got sam darn you got mitchell trubisky i think at this point you can start a process that has a deadline of the night the draft starts, that's when we're going to determine where Deshaun Watson's going to go. I would also maybe put the 49ers on that list just because, I mean, as you said, they probably want to upgrade from Jimmy Garoppolo, and they've got a pick that's not too low, at least for 2021, um, in that first round of the draft. So 
if that's a place where Deshaun Watson would want to be, I think at least with the way that defense is constructed and the personnel that's on that defense, he would at least have a pretty good chance to win. And we know how good Kyle Shanahan is at scheming. And they've just signed uh, Alex Mack. They have Trent Williams back. So that offensive line is also built to protect him. And he was one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the league in 2020. So I, I just think that there could be some things with San Francisco also that would be appealing to Deshaun Watson. And so I, I think any number of those teams could make a call and say, listen, this is what we think Deshaun Watson is worth. You know, whether it's three first round picks for however many it happens to be. And I think the Dolphins obviously have the most draft capital that they could use and, you know, sending some of the Texans picks back to them. But whatever it is, I just feel like the Texans are going to have to capitalize on the opportunity that they have, which is to trade him and then also to start rebuilding their franchise. Because as long I feel like as Deshaun Watson is there, it's just going to be a cloud over whatever this franchise wants itself to be. And until you remove that cloud, it, I, I just don't know how you get yourself from out from under that, Mike. We've kicked around from time to time over the past two months some trade scenarios that are highly unlikely but fun to think about, whether it's Deshaun Watson straight up for the number one overall pick in the draft, which is the Trevor Lawrence selection, whether it's Deshaun Watson for Kyler Murray. Maybe straight up, maybe the Cardinals have to throw a log or two on the pile to even it out. You could make the argument that straight up would work. If you're the 49ers, do you put Nick Bosa in a trade package if the Texans say the only way this is getting done is if you give us Nick Bosa? Yeah, I'd do it. I would do it. Because you know what? You got to score points to win in this in this game and in this league, and you'd be sending Nick Bosa at least – to the totally opposite conference. So you probably see him once every four years around there, maybe once every couple years based on the way the 17 game schedule would work out. And, or if you have to see him, you see him in the Super Bowl. I would do it. Point, you gotta score. You know, defense may win the championships, but you gotta score points in order to get there. So yeah, I would, I would totally do it. Then the challenge becomes evening out the two sides of that scale. You put Bosa here, you put Watson here. It's probably still, right? So what do you put, what yeah. else do you have to throw on there? Is it is it Nick Bosa and your first round pick for Deshaun Watson? I mean, let's be realistic. Quarterbacks are the ones making 40 million plus. The high end for a pass rusher was 27. You got Shaq Barrett, the premier pass rusher this year, who couldn't even get someone to offer more than the 17 base that the Buccaneers put on the table. It's going to take Nick Bosa and at least a one to to balance it out, especially because the 49ers, where are they? Are they at 12? Are they, are they at 12? They're, they're somewhere between 9 and 20. And I, I, I every, time, every time I look at it, I think, oh, I'm going to remember this now, and I, I inevitably forget. But, uh, uh, well, what, with it is 12. Thank you, Matt Casey. With Deshaun Watson and without Nick Bosa, it's still scary to think of what the 49ers can be. And with Russell Wilson still – in the NFC West with Matthew Stafford coming to the NFC West. Eventually, I think the Rams have some cap cleanup to do before they take the Jared Goff acceleration with Kyler Murray there. And you bring Deshaun Watson. Holy crap. What a division that would be. Yeah. That'd be really, really fun. So selfishly, I guess I want to see it in part for that reason, because all those quarterbacks have to play each other twice a year. But I just feel like, especially if you're Kyle Shanahan and you have the opportunity to get a quarterback who's that good and is still that young. You know, I think we all expect the Rams are going to be better when they add in Matthew Stafford, but Matthew Stafford's already basically in his mid thirties. So you get a guy who's still in his mid twenties and is that young and you still think has room to grow. Uh, yeah. I would trade Nick Bosa. I would probably add in a couple of ones too, just because that it seems to make sense to me. If that were to be the case where I can get that particular guy, that to me is all in. If I if I have to trade Nick Bosa, I'm going to do it. If I have to add in a couple more ones, I'm going to do it. If it's got to be another two and a three, probably would do that too because that's how important I think the QB position is. If I was setting the odds on this, and thank God I'm not or I'd lose my shirt, I'd probably put the Dolphins at plus 250. Then I'd put the Broncos at plus 350 or plus 400. Then I'd throw the Jets in there at plus 550 plus 600 
and the 49ers may be at that same number. Those would be the four teams that, that I would make the favorites for Deshaun Watson. And whatever the odds were of the Texans being the next team for which Watson takes a snap, I, 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 it's, you know, it's plus 2,500 at this point, if not more. Um, I, I think that, that we're getting closer and closer to the point where wherever it is, it's not going to be Houston. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think that clearly, like, and like we just started off talking about this with, you know, when John McClain says something about the NFL in Houston, that's when you know that it really is something to pay attention to because that guy is as plugged in as can be in Houston. Uh, but you didn't mention the Panthers in that, and I, I'm sort of— I did forget the Panthers. I forgot the Panthers. Okay. I, yeah, All I right. put them in somewhere between— between the the uh, mm, I, maybe right around the same spot as the Broncos because I'm not sure he yeah. wants to go to Carolina. I've heard nothing to suggest yeah. that he does. I know Carolina wants him, but I don't know that he wants to go there. Yeah, and that's been the thing to me with this whole Carolina thing, and we hear all a lot about Carolina's pursuit of him, but I just I really haven't seen the reporting that he also is interested in them, and that's so important because he has the no trade clause. So until he's like we get some sort of really credible reporting that says yes Deshaun Watson wants to go to the Carolina Panthers I just don't quite know what to make of that pursuit I mean even though uh, he played at Clemson so that's an obvious connection to the Carolinas there and I believe he grew up just a couple hours away from Charlotte and Georgia so that's another thing that you could say yeah that might make sense for the Panthers but at the same time I just I still haven't really seen something where it's definitively, yes, Deshaun Watson is interested in playing for Matt Rule and the Carolina Panthers. Sometimes when you get a chance to go home, you don't want to go home. That's just yeah, the way it works. <laughs> and maybe that chapter of his life is closed and he wants to continue to move forward in a different direction with a different team. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.